History ties us to our roots, our culture. In 1614, when Captain John Smith encouraged colonists to move to what became Gloucester in order to harvest the bounty of the sea, he established Gloucester as America's oldest seaport and the birthplace of her first major industry, the North Atlantic fishery. Few chapters in American history can boast the same depth of drama. In the past 400 years, Gloucester has lost over 10,000 men to the sea. Her remarkable story has been retold by such poets as Longfellow and T.S. Eliot. The shattered lobster pot, the broken oar, and the gear of foreign dead men. The sea has many voices, many gods and many voices. The salt is on the briar rose, the fog is in the fir trees. Though built on fishing, Gloucester has also attracted painters, sculptors, poets, adventurers, and remarkable inventors. One of the greatest inventions was as seemingly simple as paint. But it was much more than that. It solved a problem that had plagued ships ever since Egyptian times. Barnacles, worms, and weeds that grew on the bottoms of ships and slowed their progress. Two Gloucester families, Tar and Watson, worked together to find a solution to this ancient problem. Like many who had fueled the Industrial Revolution, these two men experimented for years painting chemical concoctions onto house shingles, which they immersed in Gloucester Harbor, until finally one of their concoctions showed anti-fouling properties. It was based on copper oxide in tar with naphtha. In 1863, Tarr and Wanson received a patent for their revolutionary bottom paint. It was sold worldwide and won many international awards. By 1870, the first buildings of Tarr and Wanson's paint manufactory appeared at the end of Rocky Neck. One cannot overestimate the effect of the new anti-fouling paint. It transformed not just the North Atlantic fishery, but trade, commerce, and even warfare. For many years, Tor and Watson made the only bottom paint in America, but it coated the hulls of ships that sailed the world. Dear sir, I feel under obligation to highly recommend your copper paint as the best I have ever used on a vessel. Captain Solomon Jacobs, schooner Molly Adams. Tor and Watson bottom paint is still made today over 138 years later but the buildings where it was first produced are abandoned and are suffering demolition by neglect. When these two men built the paint manufactory at the end of Rocky Neck, they did not know that both their paint and their buildings would become such an important part of New England's history. As a result of Tarn Watson's attention to detail, their buildings became beautiful as well as functional. Painters from around the world, such as Edward Hopper and John Sloan, came to capture these buildings on canvas, a trend that continues today, making the paint factory one of the most familiar images in New England art. The Tyron Watson Paint Factory has stood sentinel to our ancient Gloucester Harbor for nigh half our history as the oldest fishing port in the New World. No other monument, not even our legendary statue of the man at the wheel, so represents the deeper meaning of our beloved maritime haven, one of the greatest on the seven seas. Long may this weather-worn adjunct of our fishing fleet of centuries upon centuries serve as a revitalized guardian of our threatened environment and our very way of life. The Massachusetts Historical Commission has determined that the property is eligible for listing in the National Register of Historic Places. Rarely does a series of favorable opportunities arise that give such a clear chance as faces us now to save so remarkable a piece of history. These buildings are a daily reminder of Gloucester's heritage, a link to the past, a bridge to the future. By saving the past, we give the future a foundation on which to stand. Saving these iconic buildings is an opportunity we must not lose, a path to the future that can only help restore Gloucester to its rightful place. If only its walls could talk, what tales they could tell. Thousands of fishermen have sailed by on their way to the banks, many never to return. 
It still stands there, out on the point of Rocky Neck, like an ancient castle wreathed in history. May it stand for another century.